So exhaustion is the keynote I consider of the gemotherapy extract oak. And that exhaustion may originate for a variety of reasons. We'll be exploring exactly those reasons as well as learning much more about this oak gemotherapy and oak as a tree in today's podcast. I'm Lauren Hubele. I'm a health coach and gemotherapy expert, and I'd like to welcome my co-host, Terry Brooks. Good to see you today, Terry. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Megan, and everyone joining us. You can see I'm outdoors here in Minnesota today amongst the oaks, the hawthorn, the oak maple, all sorts of other basswood linden, um, most of which have not leafed out yet, but the, some of them, the buds are ready for harvest. Oh, beautiful. What a gorgeous backdrop. And Megan Limp, welcome. Hi, everyone. Hi, Lauren and Terry. It's great to be with you. So here we are. Ready to talk about the oak tree. Do you have one behind you, Terry? Um, there's several in the yard. I don't think those are, those are um, ash behind me, I think. But I'm looking at one off in the distance. Okay, perfect. What can you tell us about the oak as a tree? Well, this tree is named Quercus rober, the English oak tree. And it is the ruling majestic tree of the woods. Its Latin name means fine wood so we get a hint there of what some of the uses for it are. It can grow up to 90 feet tall and it may live up to a thousand years or more. It loves to be in a sunny position. It's called the tree of light in some countries in fact. Though it likes most moist ground it is indifferent to the soil type. The leaves on this tree have rounded lobes and they are attached to the branch with a quite short stem. The bark of the tree is light to dark gray and it has irregular fissures up the, up the whole um, trunk. It has male and female flowers on the same plant. The male flowers being long and yellow and drooping catkins and the female flowers are more spiky like so they're upright. Uh, the, the, of course we know that the acorns are the fruit of this tree and this particular oak they're about an inch long a third of which is covered by that little cap. The roots of this tree are said to be as deep as the tree is tall, and they are quite extensive, branching out all around. You can imagine as upright and strong as this tree is, it needs a big base of support. Recent research is showing that the vascular system of this tree contains a bright yellow dye that acts like suntan lotion for the tree. It is made from two chemicals similar in name called quercetin and quercetin, and they absorb light in this high energy invisible ultraviolet end of the spectrum, acting like a sunscreen for the tree and an overall protector. So protector, I think, is one of the themes we'll see for this tree. Hmm. Hmm. Beautiful. So when you were looking into um, information on this tree, did you discover any historical uses or interesting folklore you came across? This tree is just amazing. It happens to be one of my favorites. I say that every time, probably, but um, it is a sacred tree to the Druids. It's also the seventh letter of their secret OM alphabet script. There are so many references just to the etiology of the name of the tree in many, many cultures and, and languages around the world. The fact that is that the word Druid is often thought to be derived from the Celtic name for this tree. And it's likely one of their favorite trees. They worshiped in oak groves and this tree symbolized strength and endurance to them. They also love this tree because the mistletoe is a parasitic plant that is in the upper reaches of this tree. And mistletoe was quite sacred to Druids also. But we look at the word doer means door, a gateway, a protection from outside influences. Dru and vider in another language mean the same as voir and savoir in French, to see and to know. Also, they think this word is probably the root of the word dervish, the whirling dance that is done around an axis, um, the, around a central axis. In French, the name is chen, and I think Megan maybe will have something to say. It means spirit, similar to Shen in traditional Chinese medicine. The Gauls and Romans saw oak 
as related to their god, Sylvanus, who they called the green man, the god of agriculture and healing. And they assigned the qualities of strength, endurance, generosity, and protection to this tree. The tree is well grounded by these root systems and it reaches for heights. So it's thought to channel forces of earth and sky and that communication between earth and sky. We've learned, I've learned, I think I had heard this as, um, you know, myth in the, in the past, but I have done some scientific research and it said that this is the most likely tree to be struck by lightning. Thus, it was paired with the gods of thunder in many cultures like Thor and Zeus and Jupiter. And we've learned that it has strong electrical currents due to these deep tap roots usually growing over a subterranean waterway. So relating that power of the lightning to strike an enemy, many in Britain and across Europe assigned um, the symbolism of war to this tree. And they would have an insignia of an oak on their lapels of their uniforms. It was built, or it was made to build fortifications for their forts and, and um, protection. And many oak forests were felled in Britain just to build ships that were going to battle for, from this tree. I also learned, this was interesting, that um, oftentimes land was judged according to and assessed according to how many oak trees were on the land because that provided food for the swine. So the swine, the mast of the oak trees was quite quite a large food source for pigs. In fact, most often this tree was planted as borders along a, a person's land or their property. It is also said that oak has supported more diverse wildlife than any other tree in Britain or Europe. So we know that that kind of plays into that generosity theme too. And of course, everybody knows that oak makes great wood for furniture and, and other items like that. It's very strong and it burns well as well. Wow, what an important tree. So very important. many yeah. uses throughout history. Wow. So Terry, what, what would we consider to be the potential for this extract as we look at it, um, its components? Well, I'm, I'm very interested in the chemicals of quercetin and quercetin, and that you can see the, the root word of those comes from Quercus oak. It seems to use sunlight that's bioaccumulated by this tree to strengthen and protect our bodies. Um, these chemicals are also capable of regulating blood pressure, but most often it raises the blood pressure, and I think, Lauren, you might talk about that, reducing the size of the arteries. It's also used in Bach flower remedies, which, you know, is different than gemotherapy, but it's interesting to see how closely some other uses follow what we're learning in gemo, gemotherapy. Um, it is used when someone has setbacks and they're despondent <laughs> or despairing, but not giving up. They still have hope. Strength, endurance, generosity, protection are all good themes for this tree. I think we can see how those themes might support adrenals, nervous system, immune system, hormone production, when those systems have been stressed or depleted. And as a nervous system option, I think Oak can remind us of the strength to prevail with an open mind and a generous heart, recognizing that Oak's one weakness is its lack of flexibility. The Oak in my yard often in a windstorm are just dropping small branches all the time. So we may learn that uh, stubborn strength that is resistant will not be able to endure and it may break under that strain. I think the nervous system is probably well supported by this general. It is, it is very interesting. I really like that piece about its weaknesses, inflexibility. That's that's interesting. I wonder how that plays out. Let's let's see how this looks when we see oak as an extract and see if we see that theme come up at all. Terry, thank you for sharing all your wisdom. So the 
extract of oak that we use for gemotherapy is made from the buds of the tree. And the primary action of it is as a tonic for the adrenal gland, but, but very different than black currant, which is also a tonic for the adrenal gland because oak acts only on the adrenal cortex. And this is where steroids are synthesized. So this tonic actually helps harmonize hormone production. And that's an important thing. And you'll notice I use these two words, this tonic for the adrenals, but harmonizing the hormones. And so harmonizing meaning bringing into balance, tonic meaning it's building, it's building it, strength. In addition, oak extract is very high in antioxidants, which is, makes it a very powerful extract for those who are aging. I honestly don't use oak on children except in acute states, um, and I would never recommend oak for anyone under six. So, um, and I think that's probably because of its great strength. Um, when a GMO acts, um, uh, excuse me, but the secondary action of oak is on the central nervous system, which you mentioned, Terry. And here again, it's a tonic. Tonics um, in the form of improving depressive symptoms and states by reducing the destruction of dopamine. So rather than building dopamine itself, that's not its action, its action is to protect the dopamine that is being produced. And this effect encourages forward motion. And this forward movement is both emotionally and physically. And so you'll see it, its positive impact with physical energy to get up, overcome physical blocks or mental blocks um, that might lead to procrastination. And, you know, I was just thinking about you mentioning this, this inflexibility. And one thing we've noticed about oak is that if taken over a long period of time, it's too much because it's a tonic. And I, I, I seem to feel as though that that aggravation of that tonic may be the inflexibility. It, it, that may be what arises. So when I think about who can, who would consider oak, I, I really think uh, at some point all adult men and women would use it. But here's the particular ways I would see that happening. For women, it's very important during pregnancy um, to protect against exhaustion. I use it quite often during the first um, trimester, but it can also be used straight through. And then I find it to be very useful in the postpartum period. During perimenopause, where women deal with a lot of afternoon exhaustion and a mild depression, oak has a role in the protocol there. And, and I would imagine its, its effort to harmonize hormone production would be helpful. And then upon any signs of mental or physical aging, um, oak would come in handy in that protocol in both men and women. Now for men particularly, I see oak with exhaustion from physical and mental overwork. And that's not to say that doesn't occur in women, but I, I tend to be using different extracts for women in those cases. And I see oak um, very useful for that. Um, for men over 50, who have afternoon exhaustion and mild depression, which would um, be on par with women who are going through menopause. And then for both men and women who deal with low blood pressure. And um, so that gives you um, some good opportunities to bring it in. If in aging adults where chronic symptoms needing oak um, require something to be taken month after month, I would suggest we alternate that. And we would alternate that with something perhaps like giant redwood, because again, oak's tonifying effect can just um, be too much at a certain point. Now acutely, oak is the extract to use along with black currant for all viral and flu-like symptoms. And particularly in that nondescript period where we just feel the achiness and the exhaustion and a little bit down. Um, so all the things we've already known that are keynotes for oak. 
for adrenal support in a chronic protocol. Um, oak is the primary support for states of exhaustion. Again, it would not be something you would use for six months or a year, but more like a month or two to aid through that um, exhaustive period. The precaution I have for oak that I think we all need to remember is it does raise blood pressure. And so if you're taking medication to lower blood pressure, you just need to be aware of that. If you're taking oak acutely for a flu, you would monitor your blood pressure if that happens to be you and you're worried about your medication and having things come in balance. And I would use small doses of it in those acute cases. So that's how I see oak from the bottle of chemotherapy extract. Megan, what do you have to say about it from the Asian medicine lens? Yeah, thank you, Lauren. Oak, as you said, is a great tonic for the adrenal gland. And if we flip that and look at it through the lens of Asian medicine, it's a wonderful kidney chi tonic. Kidney in Asian medicine is our deepest and most ancestral energy, considered the root of life. And Terry, this really uh, got me thinking when you were talking about the roots of the oak tree being as deep as they are tall. And so oak really shores up our deep roots of life. It houses what we call our jing, which is the essence, and acts as a savings account that can be transformed energetically into blood or into chi when we need it. And I think that this really is how oak is experienced, almost as a boost of energy or vitality that can swoop in and save us when we feel like our tank is empty and we're in need of support. So oak can be a game changer when it's the right extract. I can't tell you how many times that my family and my clients and myself have turned to oak at the early stages of not feeling well or at times of exhaustion. However, like Lauren said, because oak is a tonic, it does two things, it strengthens chi, but it also causes chi to rise. So if we think about a river and we're building that up, you know, the chi does rise. And in the body, oak does tend to have the chi rise. And together with the liver, <clears throat> kidney forms the roots of how the hormones form in the body and then are distributed through the body. In modern physiology, Kidney chi functions include not just the organs of kidney, but also the adrenals, the testes, the ovaries, and a relationship to the whole endocrine system. So if we look at the symptoms of adrenal fatigue syndrome, just as an example, where kidney chi is often depleted in those cases, we would typically see symptoms like mild depression and chronic fatigue and decreased sexual function, and maybe some thyroid imbalance. And this really works to highlight the relationship between the kidneys, the adrenals, and oak, because oak is indicated in all of those symptoms. The kidney energy in the body is really unique, though, because it has a predictable pattern of change throughout our lives, just as we have phases that we move through in our life and kidney chi gradually declines as we age. So we can see how oak is so effective at helping and supporting premature aging. However, even though the goal isn't to completely prevent aging, the goal here really is to move through the stages of our life or the aging process with ease so that we can move through transitions in a state of balance and continue to thrive and feel comfortable at each stage. I love what you just said about aging, Megan. That is so beautiful because that's really it. Um, and and this is this kind of captures the essence of gemotherapy. Gemotherapy never suppresses or is anti anything. It it supports whatever process is happening, whether it's emotional process or it's aging or it's an acute illness. Lovely. Thank you for stating that. So um, you may want to know a little bit more about what we're talking about here. And we always invite you to take a look at our other podcasts, but we each have 
some information that can help you study a little bit more about our specialty. Terry, what do you have on hand for everyone today if they want to learn more about trees? I have, again, one of my favorite books, The Meaning of Trees, Botany, History, Healing, and Lore by Fred Hagenader. And I just need to say that Oak also supports me in my gardening habit because the legend is if the leaves on the oak are the size of a mouse's ear, it's time to plant your corn. It's not time to plant corn yet in Minnesota, but I'm watching those, those leaves, those buds. Oh, wow. What an interesting fact. And how about you, Megan? Where can the people learn more about Asian medicine? Yeah, so there's a great book if you're interested in learning a bit about the philosophy of Asian medicine, which is called The Web That Has No Weaver. And if you're interested in finding out more about my practice or general therapy through an Asian lens, you can visit my uh, website at aculeb.com. Great. And if you're listening to these podcasts and learning a lot about extracts and wondering how you might apply them to yourself, I'd like to recommend my new book that's just out on restoring your immunity. And it's actually a step-by-step -step guide of how to apply these GMOs to your own healing process. You can also read a lot of information about gemotherapy on my website, laurenhubelay.com, or consider joining me for one of my classes. Ladies, always a pleasure. Thank you for sharing about Oak Tree and um, look forward to our next recording. Thank you. Mm -hmm.